That's a very good question. They will only happen if the other parties agree to accept the Prime Minister's proposal, and there's no sign of that. I mean, the whole thing looked at from outside and sort of putting aside some of the rhetoric, the whole thing really looks thoroughly undignified, and it d does not in any way assist the reputation of politics as a whole. Look at these seven-party leaders, people who are saying they can't even agree on a debate and the form of a debate. And this, as you've heard said many times in your program, is one of the most fascinating, most interesting, most uncertain general elections for a very long time. All the more reason, one would think, and the public will think, that there should be a proper structure of debate. I mean, does it actually matter for democracy, for a, a full and fair election, whether or not the debates take place? I think it gives people an opportunity to form a view about character. And character is increasingly important in the kind of general elections that we have in this country now. And it seems to me uh, the election will take place, debates or no debates. Uh, but if, for example, you're making a proposal which involves spending public money or not, as the case may be, then if these debates take place in advance uh, of the publication of manifestos, then every time a journalist like yourself might ask a difficult question of any one of the leaders, they'll simply say, well, let's wait, we'll give you detailed costings when we launch our manifesto. The idea that you can do this before the party's programmes are not fully in front of the British people seems to me to be risible. And that, I think, may in the end be the thing which torpedoes the whole idea put forward by the Prime Minister. On the other hand, uh, do you think there will be any uh, political cost to him if he successfully manages to stop these debates going ahead? Well, remember, it's one of the first rules of the general election, isn't it? Uh, the opposition always wants debates and the Prime Minister always refuses them. Except, of course, Gordon Brown in the last election. And I think his experience and what people remember from his experience is such that it would be very, very curious indeed if there was a concerted push from the Conservatives, at least, uh, to have debates. But look, public opinion on this is going to be very, very important. And because this issue has been raised so far out from the general election, after all, we're, what, six weeks away? Then I think this particular issue has got time to fester. And I think anyone who says, well, the Prime Minister will not be affected by this, is pinning his or her hopes on something which may not come about. I mean, I mean, why is that? You think that there could be a cost of being seen to be a, a chicken or a coward or a humbug of some kind? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't like the language. Uh, but if you've been the Prime Minister for five years, if you want to be the Prime Minister for the next five years, shouldn't you be willing to take part in a sensible debate once the uh, policy programmes of all of the seven political parties have been put to the public? Uh, isn't that what you would expect? I, mean, I don't think you need to throw around um, accusations of fright or something of that kind. I think it's just a question of respecting public opinion, saying, look, you want to invest your authority in me? Very good. Here's what I'm willing to do and to say when you question me about how I will exercise that authority. Of course, the Conservative counter-argument is that being seen on equal terms with the Prime Minister uh, raises up people in the way that it uh, raised up Nick Clegg, for example, uh, during the 2010 general election. Well, the answer to that is, of course, that this is going to be a multi-party election, far more of a multi-party election than we've ever had. And should not minority views be represented? Should they not be reflected in the way in which this is... This whole matter is, is covered. We don't know. I mean, I mean, even if I say so, old professionals like yourself and myself, we are not in a position of predicting what the outcome is going to be. I can't remember a general election of which you could uh, safely say that. And in those circumstances, I think different rules apply. And certainly different public expectations will apply. And therefore, a failure to respond to these, publications, to these expectations could well be very, very damaging. Mr. Campbell, thank you very much.